Our third speaker today will be my colleague and friend, Professor Peter Robinson. Peter is Managing Director of the Strauss Institute for Dispute Resolution and an Associate Professor here at the School of Law. He has prevented, uh, presented Advanced Negotiation and Mediation Skills courses in more than 39 U.S. states and many foreign countries. He has served on the boards of the Christian Conciliation Service of Los Angeles and many other regional and national organizations. He's a fellow of the International Academy of Mediators, a member of the American College of Civil Trial Mediators, and was recognized as a Southern California super lawyer in the area of mediation last year. Our next subject is the education, training, and selection of mediators. Peter? I'm going to take those in reverse order because I think that it uh, builds backwards. Um, in the United States, as uh, Nina mentioned, uh, that there's really just two schools of thought and two schools of practice as far as the selection of mediators. That many mediators are selected because of their, their uh, subject matter expertise. And if it is a construction dispute, they would want a person like John Bishop or Tom Stepanowicz who are, uh, who are familiar with the law and maybe the engineering and, uh, and, and the, the process of, uh, of construction. And therefore, that, um, that if, the, if we think of the selection of mediator as a person with, with subject matter expertise, uh, what ends up happening is that uh, you have people who are senior states people, uh, either in an industry or in, an, in a practice of the law, uh, an area of specialty of legal practice, and, um, and th those people become uh, the people that are invited to become mediators. Uh, if that's the profile, we end up with a person who has a lot of life experience and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, experience uh, as a lawyer usually, uh, or, but maybe not a lawyer, a, a person with technical expertise, and, and, but they've been through these kinds of disputes many times as a participant or an advocate. The, um, the profile for the education or training of that person is that they will uh, often, when they begin to see that they are, are being, uh, that they are acceptable and that they are being sought for mediation assistance, uh, is that they will then uh, make themselves available and will sign up for a, a typically a 40 hour continuing professional education kind of program. Uh, and 40 hours became uh, a, somewhat of a standard in the United States. Um, it is a random number, uh, but they will go through uh, a, a classic kind of uh, skills building orientation uh, about managing the process and uh, practice their opening statements and learn techniques for helping people to facilitate communication, um, also uh, how to facilitate the negotiation, and also how to sell the deal and, and, and to facilitate closing uh, the deal. Um, so, so that will be kind of a path for a certain kind of person whose real credential doesn't have, it has much more to do with their life experience before, their, uh, uh, before they've taken any training or education. Um, now, on the other far extreme, you have uh, you do have uh, what John Bishop also mentioned uh, is that uh, in our law schools you have a, a real wave of education about alternative dispute resolution, and that students who are um, still studying to become lawyers are learning about uh, interest-based negotiation and mediation and arbitration in a very uh, very pervasive kind of way, and that it's becoming part of training the next generation of of lawyers. So there are academic programs. Programs. Frankly, Pepperdine is, is, is one of those, and, uh, and we're very proud of, uh, of an extensive curriculum that covers things like Nina teaches and cross-cultural negotiation and dispute resolution, uh, as well as um, a variety of things like uh, Professor Jack Coe teaches a class in ICSID uh, 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 dispute resolution processes. So I just, uh, there are an academic, there are academic courses uh, leading to an LLM or a master's degree, but there's also a lot of, of continuing a professional education and that the, the senior people uh, in, in all kinds of fields, either law or industry, uh, often have the reputation and the, the expertise to where they are, are kind of senior states people for uh, a given kind of dispute and that those people are regularly invited to, to, to 
to be helpful. Um, they may have, they may in fact be asked eventually to be a mediator, uh, but they, they probably are already uh, approached and say, could you be helpful? And, uh, and they may be coaching par parties as far as how to handle their problems. Eventually, um, over time, they, they realize that, uh, that there's an opportunity for me to serve as a mediator and, uh, and, and acquire formal training. So there's kind of a, I think it's really selection driven. Now don't forget that Nina also reminded us that there are uh, situations to where parties uh, are not looking for subject matter expertise. And in that situation, uh, the facilitation skills of the potential neutral uh, are, are much more uh, scrutinized and much more the emphasis rather than their, their background and, and their technical expertise or subject matter expertise. Uh, and again, people, uh, there are extensive, uh, not only academic programs, but also um, mentoring and, uh, and, and uh, experiential kinds of things that people do to uh, establish their, their qualifications as a mediator. Much of it has to do with being accepted on different panels. That becomes, uh, with, because we don't have any licensing or regulation, that becomes the, the, the way to confirm that a person is qualified if they've been accepted to serve on various panels. All of our speakers uh, here on this panel have spent thousands of hours uh, not only teaching uh, law students and other professionals, but also engaging in skills training. Uh, here and, uh, and elsewhere. Let me just invite uh, Linda and Nina if they would like to add anything to what Peter previously said. I think the main thing again is the diversity of programs that are offered. Anything from a 40-hour training to a 40-hour 40, uh, uh, spread out over an academic curriculum. It could be a short training required to be on a court panel. It could be a master's degree, which takes two or three years. Uh, it could be an LLM, an advanced legal degree. And what we tell new people coming into the field here is it really depends on what you want to do with it. If you want to become a professional mediator, and that's all you do, that's your focus, then you need to treat it with the same respect that you would any other profession. So if you're going to be a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, a lawyer, you are trained in many different skills to become very effective in that area. And if you're going to be a full-time mediator, most people who are full-time mediators here have extensive training to show the respect for it as a profession. I also find that having been a trial lawyer before becoming a mediator, that um, I myself had to be aware with the balancing of skills and understanding of interests. And the more training that we do, uh, for lawyers as to the mediation process, the better we are able to have them be aware of what the mediator is doing and have them participate without feeling that they are somehow losing an edge or that they are losing an advantage and have them come to the process with an with an interest in balancing because they are less fearful since they have a better understanding of what is trying to be accomplished by the neutral who's involved. I think it's interesting to note that all of the participants uh, on the U.S. side uh, in this conversation are trained as lawyers. Uh, I think this does reflect the dominance of lawyers in U.S. mediation practice in many of its primary aspects, uh, including the mediation of litigated cases uh, or cases in pre-litigation. Um, having said that, uh, there are many hundreds if not thousands of individuals uh, with other professional training who are engaged in specific kinds of mediation programs, whether within organizations uh, such as uh, ombuds or employment mediators uh, or those engaged in community mediation projects uh, nationally.